Hello there. Delighted to have you on board. Each week we try to share the wisdoms of God with you that it may be a blessing in your life. Here is a scripture which I took to heart, oh, what, 40 or 50 years ago or more, and I've tried to live by it. Of course, nobody's perfect, and I'm not trying to claim that, but I've tried to live by this. It's a wonderful scripture, and it's over there in 2 Timothy 2, verse 4. Here's what it says. No man that warreth entangleth himself, entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. I've oft times said we're not tourists, we're soldiers for the Lord. And it says here, if you're in this war for the Lord, don't get entangled with the affairs of this life. That doesn't mean we're not to sleep and work and do the regular things, but you don't want to get entangled with the affairs of this life that hold you back from your higher purpose. And I find because of that all these years, God has done some incredible things for me for which I humbly give him the glory. I don't deserve any of it, I know it. In fact, I'm gonna tell you a remarkable story. Can you imagine this? Here we are long ago, 40 years in Belfast, a ministry that had won thousands of people to the Lord. To this day, there are pastors and missionaries operating in different parts of the world who were saved in our meetings. It's just wonderful what the Lord did. We had a beautiful home on the cave hill, the hillside overlooking Belfast Law. And then over there on a clear day, you could see Scotland. It was lovely. And God suddenly says, Leave the whole thing, leave it all, and go to America. Of course, the newspapers trying to make fun said, yeah, he's going to Disney World. In fact, we were going to go to Kissimmee in Disney World. So we negotiated long distance, uh, a house to stay in, uh, unfurnished, of course. And the day came when Maureen and I and our three children and the youngest one was, let me see, seven years of age. So it was a little family. We decided to go and obey God. We had between four and five hundred dollars total. I've often told this part of it. But the other part is rather remarkable. We flew to America and we got in at Orlando in Florida, Orlando International Airport. There was a lady who met us. In fact, that was the lady that helped us to get the house that we were going to stay in. And she, we didn't know anybody else, or hardly anybody else. This is all to start. It's new, it's fresh. And she met us and she was going down. I think they called it the 441 from the airport to the house and uh, late in the day. And my wife Maureen said to this lady, uh, would you mind stopping at Kmart on the way down? And the lady said, of course not. And Maureen said, we're, we're gonna buy five pillows. We're gonna sleep in the carpet, five pillows. So the lady said, sure, Maureen went in and bought the five pillows. Got back in the car, we drove on down to Kissimmee Florida. I remember the area of Buenaventura and uh, we came up to the door, put the key in the door and opened it and lo and behold the house was furnished as they say from top to bottom. Beds in all the bedrooms, little tables at each side, lamps on the tables, right down to knives and forks, everything you could think of. I said, what in the world is going on? This is a miracle beyond words. And a good while later, I was suspicious of a certain businessman who lived in a different part of America than Kissimmee, that he might be behind this. And it was actually years later, I approached him, called him up, 
said, had you anything to do with that? And he smiled. He said, yes. I said, well, how did you know we were coming on that day? And how did you get a key to get into the house? I said, there's so many things I want to know. I am so grateful for what you did. A house totally furnished. And we had money. We were going to sleep on the floor. And then we didn't have money to buy furniture. But we were in his will. You know what the man told me? What a lovely man. I tell you the truth, Leslie, he said it so long ago. I don't remember those details. He had got the furniture, rented a truck, got his men to come over and furnish the entire place. Are those acts of Irish luck? Are those coincidences? If they are, then I've had about 60 years of coincidences. I say to myself, how did that happen? God's in charge. God's in control. Pando Crater, the God who's in control, regardless of all contradictory circumstances. Look what it says in Revelation 1 verse 8 regarding our wonderful Savior. I am Alpha and Omega. That's the first and the last letter of the Greek alphabet. It means I am everything in between. The beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and was and which is to come. He is so fabulous if you're trusting him all the way and do your best not to be entangled in things that are not helpful. You'll be astounded at the way he leads and guides and directs. Look what it says in Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust, bata, fully lean on him. Trust in the Lord, Yahweh, with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Now get this bit. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Put him first. In all thy ways put him first, and he shall direct thy paths. So many people start off life that they hardly know what they're doing or where they're going. So they get out to, uh, there to get a bit of education and, and see what talent they have and try to make it on their own. That's not the way it was supposed to be. We're supposed to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not onto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall, he shall direct thy paths. You know, God never has to say, oops, or, or that surprised me, or I didn't know that was going to happen. God knew when we would be on that plane in obedience to him. God knew when we would be touching down. God knew that lady would pick us up. It, it, it's incredible to be, now, now please don't think this is trying to be a reflection on me. I am just a human being like you are, and well aware of it. But it's to teach us through the scriptures and through experiences we have had that he never lets you down. He simply never lets you down. Can I say that again? He never disappoints, never says oops, is always on time, even though sometimes his on time is 11.59 p.m. In other words, I'm telling you, what I've discovered is this, where God guides, he provides. Where God guides, he provides. One more time, where our God guides, he provides. That was just one of the happenings as we started that ministry in Kissimmee, Florida, before we moved and ended up here in Tarpon Springs on the other side of Florida, being guided by God all the way. Oh, praise God. Praise the Lord. Can I read that one to you again from Revelation? I am Alpha and Omega. Do you know something I've discovered, and this is true, I've discovered that God already has the problem, already has the answer before the devil has thought up the problem. Don't be scared when the problem hits. Don't be scared out of your mind full of fear 
when the difficulty hits. It surprised you, but it didn't surprise God. And he's such a loving Heavenly Father. If ye then, being normal, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? He's a loving, tender, kind-hearted Father. He just asks for our cooperation. And my goodness, I am Alpha and Omega. <laughs> I am here and I'm at the end of this at the same time. He's there with you at the beginning of your problem, but he's already at the end and got the problem all solved. He knew we would need furniture. He knew we didn't have money. I never asked that man once anything about furniture or money. Absolutely not. And I'm puzzled as to how it finally worked out. But God worked it out. He moved the chess pieces around so that when we went there that night, we all slept in comfortable beds. And then got up the next morning rejoicing in the absolute miracle. And I say to myself, how did that happen? I'm almost through. I have one more thing to say. I want you to know that God is not surprised. He doesn't say, oops, when the problem hits. In fact, he's already at the end with the problem solved. Wow, 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 wow. I want you to tune in, will you? Maybe help us with, with the finances. LeslieHale.com. You can leave a donation there. Do you know that you can watch the Sunday morning service on YouTube live, live 10 o'clock Sunday mornings? And please remember, in the first Sunday of September, we're going to start a new series on the seven feasts of Israel. It'll last for about eight Sundays, and all who come every Sunday will get a beautiful certificate with your name on it and my signature testifying that you've taken that full course. But if you can make it on Sunday mornings, you ought to do it. We've taken all the necessary precautions that we have uh, been advised to take, and the Lord is blessing the meetings. But I have to warn you, there's no big shots around here. There's no star operators. There's no entertainment. We are seekers after God and after His Word. And finally, what does it say? Well, let me quote it exactly again. No man that warreth, it's in the war, entangleth himself with the affairs of this life unnecessarily, unnecessary, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. You cannot see a soldier giving somebody a call and say, oh, I'll be with you in 10 minutes. I'm going to leave this place. No. He's there to do the Father's will. In his instance, the captain's will. Love you with all my heart. Think of these things. Think on these things. Think on these things, Paul said. They're spiritual. They're packed with wisdom. And I want you to tune in Sunday morning or come here instead. God bless. See you next time. Bye-bye.